So if you're someone who is not expecting themselves to be HIV positive, you will not go to get tested. Well, U equals U is the new, relatively new understanding that we have that when someone's on effective treatment, they can't pass the virus on to their sexual partners. And obviously this is a real game changer because people living with HIV, people like me, have been living with the feeling that we are perhaps vectors of disease, you know, and you get the public kind of response that we are unclean. Um, and then suddenly there's this great liberation that actually, we can't pass the virus on to our sexual partners. There's no need for anyone to be afraid anymore. The thing about the U Equals U campaign is not enough people know about it yet. In campaigns like U Equals U let people in hard to reach communities know that if you do, if you are diagnosed HIV positive and you are in effective treatment, you can't pass the virus on. But unless it's understood in the cultural, faith-based, religious, spiritual context for a lot of the communities that we represent, then that messaging just doesn't get through. Inequality and HIV are, have always been quite linked. I think I, there is quite a lot of evidence that people that have less power or are marginalized for a number of reasons, maybe because of their sexuality, because of their uh, ethnic background, or, or even because of gender inequality, are much more likely to have HIV. We see all the time that sexual health is a social justice issue. So the disparities and inequalities that uh, black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities face in society at large are also mirrored in sexual health and well-being. Some people find it much harder to engage, as they say, with healthcare. That is the case if you don't have English as your first language and you are concerned, worried, afraid. If you're older than the at-risk groups, if you're someone who is not expecting themselves to be HIV positive, you will not go to get tested. You know, if you're a, if you're a woman or maybe if you're a young person or maybe you're having kind of issues um, around, you know, growing older with HIV. I think the kinds of quality of service that you'll access in different, um, you know, in different places will be quite, quite different. I think there is variation depending on which service you go to, particularly with the cuts to public health funding and, you know, one unit might provide that whole person care approach with on-site psychologists, um, comorbidity clinics, whereas others will say everything has to go back to their GP. So there is definitely inequality and it needs further resource. By the very nature of uh, who HIV affects, we have uh, some centres in the UK that are very large and some centres that are a lot smaller. Obviously the larger centres can tend to provide more uh, specialist services, often having uh, joined up clinics for people with say HIV and cardiac problems or HIV and kidney problems uh, or HIV and frailty as they age. I think we increasingly need to look at a more networked approach across, across the country rather than perhaps a, 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 an isolated approach so that people living in places where they routinely access their HIV care at a smaller centre can also access more specialist services at a linked larger centre that's able to provide uh, more integrated and specialist services. In the UK, we're doing really well. We're now at 92% of all people living with HIV have been diagnosed and that's fantastic but this isn't even across all demographic groups. So we need to make sure that everyone who has potentially put themselves um, at risk of acquiring HIV is aware and knows how to access testing so that they can access treatment.